In Australia's southern state of Victoria, the land is still recovering from a decade-long drought. And farmers are now looking at new technologies to help them stay productive. One of them genetically engineered canola, authorised for the first time this year in New South Wales and Victoria. Well, this is the canola that we're going to plant this year. And uh, this year it's the Roundup Ready canola. We're really looking forward to uh, putting some new technology in the ground and watching it grow. You might want to stand back a little bit. Commercial farmer Andrew Widerman believes genetically modified canola will improve annual yield by at least 20% while reducing the use of pesticide. But it's the next generation of GM crops that excite him most. But the end game is where we're looking at, and that's looking at drought and frost tolerant crops. Because here in, in my area here, the last 12 years, frosts and, and dry conditions have really impacted heavily on the local area. And uh, if we really want people to stay here in the rural areas, we need to be profitable. And out in front of you is a sign that says GE Free Zone. But profit isn't everything for Helen Chambers. And we're really proud of what we grow here and proud that we actually see our produce as food and that we're getting healthy, nutritious food to, um, to man humanity. The Chambers have been on the family farm for five generations, surviving the latest drought through biological farming practices. Their closest neighbour is planting GM canola this year and that decision worries the chambers. The winds that can, can blow, um, the pollen, the, the beehives that have to be around the area to pollinate the canola crops, um, all these things have the opportunity to contaminate our farm. Professor Rick Rausch at the Faculty of Land and Food Resources at the University of Melbourne is playing down the risk of contamination. From 2003 to 2006, I I'd moved back to the United States and I was very interested in following up how this was being handled in the United States and Canada. And what I discovered was there really were no big problems with coexistence between organic, conventional and GM growers. Professor Rausch is also satisfied with the level of testing on GM crops. The genetically modified crops that are currently out in commercial use are as safe for human health and the environment as anything is produced conventionally. No one has looked for that evidence of harm. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Scott Kinnear finds the idea that GM technologies will help address climate change laughable. We don't need GM foods to feed the world. We don't need GM foods to solve the problems of climate change. This is, this is persuasive hysteria from scientists and it's very unethical to make these claims. In the meantime, concerned consumers may well have to stay awake from canola oil as GM labelling will not be required.